Hello everybody, this is Howard, the Teaser King, coming to you with week six of college football. We had a good week last week. Uh, picked a lot of winners, and I'm really zoning in on this uh, over-unders that I'm doing mostly in college. Uh, a lot of the times, the, the spreads are so high that it makes it difficult to pick the spread, but easy to, to pick. If you know there's over teams playing each other, like a Baylor TCU or Baylor Texas Tech, uh, then it's easier that you know they're going to score a lot uh, as opposed to maybe it's a close game, maybe it's not. Uh, also with the under teams like Michigan, Northwestern, some of the MAC schools, Duke, where they're good defenses and not you know average quarterbacks, you know they're not going to score a lot, so it makes the it makes it hard to lay 16, but easy to say, well, they're going under 45 or 50. So that's what I've been uh, really working on hard, and I think I've got it fairly well. I have each team ranked over and under. If you have any questions, you can certainly leave me a comment or an email and say, well, you know, who do you like on this over or under, or how do you rank this team or that team? I've done every team, including the MAC and the Sun Belt. Um, so there's a lot of key ones that you can get into in these lesser teams just because great defense, no offense, and they're playing under games. So let's get to this week. Let's get to some regular picks first. Uh, first game is Old Miss laying 42-43 to New Mexico State. Uh, I like Old Miss in this game, even though the number's high, because... Ole Miss put up 70 points the first two weeks, 43 on Alabama. They had trouble with the good defensive teams in Virginia or in Vanderbilt and Florida, who are really good defensive teams. So you're not going to get that 60 points, even though Alabama is. Alabama is more of a run stop, running defensive team, and they always have trouble with good passing attacks. And um, the same thing here with. Uh, Ole Miss, Florida is not the same type of defense as Alabama. They're a good defense, and Vanderbilt is better against the pass. Florida just has a fast defense, so they're going to be tough on anybody. Uh, the only way to really beat Florida is more with a running attack. Uh, so Ole Miss, uh, laying the 37, 36, they have to win the game. It's a must-win game for them. They've beating Alabama. They don't want all that to go to waste. Yeah, they lost at Florida as a road favorite, and that's where I tell you uh, these roles make all the difference. Had they been a road dog, I, I think they would have won the game. But being a road favorite, Florida played well as a home dog. Uh, it just motivates the team more when they're home dogs. So that's why it's tough when you're a road favorite because the home team's really pissed. Now, if the home team's favored, yeah, they let down a little bit. They're, ah, oh, we're favored. We're supposed to win. So that's why it's hard to be a road favorite. Anyway, Florida, after a loss, laying 37, they'll put up their 60, 70 points again. New Mexico State's terrible. Uh, they will score some points, but not. maybe they get to 20, but it's going to be, uh, I don't think so. I think it'll be, because Mississippi's got a really strong defense also. I just look at Old Miss putting up 55 to 65 points. New Mexico State maybe getting 10 or 50, you know, 10 to 17. So it just looks like a Old Miss uh, after a loss. Uh, I just love it. They have to win. They're playing a very very weak team. Uh, next game. Um, West Virginia is laying seven to Oak State. Um, Oak State's really been confusing me this year. They go to Central Michigan. They put up 20-some points. Uh, then they play Texas to a 31-28 game. They score 50 or 60 on another team. I can't remember. A, uh, a weaker team. And then they beat Kansas State. So I don't know who they are because Texas basically has no offense, as TCU showed them, and they gave up 28 points to Texas. Then they go and they play Kansas State, who's got a very strong defense, and they put up 
36 on on uh, Kansas State. Even though it's at home, Kansas State always brings a good defense. So West Virginia is very strong at home. They played Oklahoma fairly well for three quarters. They got down, had to throw. West Virginia is very good at home. Oak State, uh, that Texas game really bothers me that they went 31-28 to Texas. Clearly it's terrible. Um, so I like West Virginia at home taking seven down to one. I think West Virginia wins the game. Um, I think the Oak State's defense is not strong enough. And uh, their offense, I don't know, but West Virginia seemed to have a fairly decent defense. Again, this is one of these teams, West Virginia, where you know they play nobody week one. They're off week two, week three. I don't know who they're playing. So you don't even get a flavor of West Virginia playing a good team till last week against Oklahoma. We're already at week six, and they've really only played one good team. So you have no you know, feel, and that's the problem with college. Uh, these weird schedules where they're playing high school teams, and then you end up getting absolutely no no idea about the team until they finally play in conference. By then, like I said, it's six, seven, eight weeks into it, and you have an idea about the team. So, I think West Virginia laying the one there. Um, Marshall's laying six to Southern Miss. Um, watching Marshall, they lost to Ohio. They played very weak since Cato uh, graduated. He's playing Canadian football. Uh, their quarterback was really explosive last year. They're just not the same team. Their offense is weak. Southern Miss has got a much stronger offense. They're not a good, they're, they're eh, maybe not even a decent team yet. They got kind of a weak defense, but they do have an explosive offense. And in this game, I'm looking at a weak offensive team in Marshall playing a strong offensive team in Southern Miss. So I think Southern Miss can win the game straight out. I think Marshall, I think, would have a hard time blowing them out. And you're laying six, so you take 12. I just think Southern Miss will be able to hang with them and or beat them. Marshall just doesn't have the offense to really blow them out, and that's really what it's about. I don't think Marshall's defense is all that strong, and I think Southern Miss uh, can play well. So I'd like the dog in this game. This is really sometimes what I call play against the team. You're playing against Marshall because they're a favorite and they're weak, and you have an explosive offense on the other side. So Southern Miss and 12 should keep the game close because Marshall doesn't have the offense to do anything about it. So I'll take Southern Miss and the 12. Um, let's see. All right, TCU's playing Kansas State, laying eight or eight and a half. I like TCU here. Kansas State's defense, very good as always. The quarterbacks, I mean, they're Kansas State. They put up 30-some on Oklahoma uh, State last week. But as I said, it's false because Oklahoma State gave up 28 to Texas. As you could see last week against DCU, they, they have no offense whatsoever. This is one of the worst offensive teams I've ever seen in my life, Texas. So the fact that Kansas State puts up 30 on them and Texas puts up 28 on them not only makes me think Oak State has no defense, but now I wonder about Kansas State, um, how good are they? And I just see TCU just being too strong for Kansas State here. And I like the spread. Here's where the spread comes in. If TCU was laying 20, I'd probably take Kansas State in 26. Because they're at home and they have the decent defense and a decent offense. But because I'm getting such a small number at 8, 8.5, even if it's 9, uh, I prefer it under 3. Um, I, I like TCU to win the game by at least a field goal. That should be no problem for them, and uh, they're, they're the much better team uh, for sure. So they'll put up their 40 or 50 on Kansas State. Uh, I'm not sure how much Kansas State will score. Remember, TCU still has a good defense. I don't think Kansas State has what it takes to really hurt TCU, which is a long uh, passing attack, which Texas Tech has, which Baylor has. That's the teams that hurt TCU. But Kansas State's more of a ball control running team, and I don't, this isn't going to 
they're not going to be able to do much and keep up with them. TCU can score on anybody. Uh, they're right up there as the number one team. Them, Baylor. I thought Old Miss still a very good team. Michigan State probably the top four. Ohio State, I'm. Uh, they're a joke right now. Um, they're beating nobody. Uh, you know, so just because they won the title last year on a fluke, because. Uh, Cardinal Jones comes in, nobody's got film on him, and he, he's got good receivers who bail him out. Uh, we're seeing the true Cardinal Jones here. Uh, so I don't I don't buy Ohio State until they show me. They're going to have to beat Michigan and Michigan State. Good luck there. Um, so anyway, I like TCU only laying the 2.5. Um, Texas Tech, 12.5 over Iowa State, same thing. I think Texas Tech, uh, Mahomes looks like he's ready to play. Now here's a strange, here's where my dichotomy comes in. I see the game as an over-under of 74. Now Ohio State, uh, Iowa State is not a very good offensive team. Texas Tech will blow them out of, of the game. And I see Texas Tech putting up their 40 or 50. I don't see Iowa State putting up their 20. So I don't buy the 74 over-under. I think it's too high. Unless Texas Tech gets 65 of the points. And I'm looking at the game. Is it going to be a close high-scoring game or is it going to be a blowout high-scoring game? And just judging by the way Texas Tech played TCU and Baylor, Texas Tech scores 50 at home against kind of a weak Iowa State team. Iowa State's not going to score that much. So I don't think they can get over 74. I don't want to bet a Texas Tech game under. That leaves the third option that Texas Tech will put up most of the points and win by 40 and that's how I look at it so of the options I can't go over because Iowa State's not an over team so therefore I can't go under because it's Texas Tech so I got to play Texas Tech minus six and a half that's the beauty of my whole new methods of uh, ranking these teams over as an under you know as an over team and under here's a perfect example Texas Tech and over team playing a weak Iowa State team that I don't even know if it's an under um, they're very weak, and you know, basically, I, I see the blowout before I see them matching Texas Tech and, and going over the 74. That could happen, but Texas Tech laying only six and a half years is a much much better play, I believe. Um, let's see, one more game. Uh, Utah lane seven to Cal. This is a tough game because Utah is a very strong defensive team. They're at home where they play very well. They just crushed Oregon. Cal is playing very well, but when you look at Cal's schedule, they haven't beaten anybody. Um, they only put up 34 on Washington State, which I thought they'd score 50 in that game easily. Uh, they beat Washington at Washington, but Washington's not a very good team. The other teams they beat, they beat a weak Texas team, 45-44, where they gave up 20 points to them. So I'm looking at Cal, and I'm going, they haven't beaten anybody. I'm looking at Utah, going, well, they did beat Michigan, and they crushed Oregon. So it's two very good um, teams that they beat. The over-under here is 62 Hard to go over because basically uh, Utah's an under team. Cal, I thought was an over team, but isn't really putting up the 50, 60 points like a TCU or a Baylor. So I'm not really sure if this is an over game or an under game because of Cal really not playing this type of good defensive team. So I look at it and I go, I know Cal's got a great quarterback. I love their coach. She was at uh, Louisiana Tech and they covered all the time. Um, yeah, I know Cal's undefeated, but they're not they're not a top five or ten team. Utah, I don't know if they're a top five or ten team either, but I do love that they beat Oregon and Michigan. So they played a really good defensive team. They didn't score a lot on them and a really good offensive team. So the best way I looked at this was to take Cal plus the 13. Um, just because Cal hasn't played anybody, I still like them. 
Uh, I'm just noting they haven't. Utah should win at home, but Kell's got a great quarterback and a great coach, and those things are what I'm looking for to bet. Their defense, they did hold Washington State to 28. They held Washington, I think, under 20. So I'm kind of confused about Kell now. Are they really this over team that I thought they were, or are they kind of an under team? Uh, we'll find that out, but I think at this point I'd like Cal in the 13. I think they're a live dog. I think Utah should win at home, but I don't see a blowout. I don't see you blowing out Cal with this quarterback. So I like Cal in the 13. I think it's the best way to play this. We'll get more information on over-under of Cal. Utah I thought was under, and they put up 75 points on Oregon. Now. So we'll see what happens, but... Uh, I think Cal in the 13 is the best way to play this. Uh, okay, a few over, a few over unders. Um, I'll go right to the Michigan Northwestern. I love this game under. I would lock it, but the over under so low, it's at 36. So I'm going under the 42 or 41 or 43, whatever, wherever you can get the best line, and just simply. Northwestern has showed their defense. They held Duke. They held Stanford. They shut out Minnesota. They're a very, very strong defensive team. Michigan has no quarterback. Again, Michigan will run the ball. On this defense, it's going to be tough. Michigan's defense, outstanding, a top-five defense. And I think Northwestern is also a top-five defense. So you got two outstanding defenses, outstanding coaches, good running attacks, and basically neither team has a quarterback. Uh, it's a beautiful under game. Uh, so if we take it under, I think it was 35-36, you go under, let's say, 41-42. First team to 13 wins the game. And I don't, I'm not sure either team will get to 13. Um, two, best, two, two of the top five defenses in the country playing go under. And this is what the beauty of this whole new method is. Because before, Michigan's laying eight. I don't know, would I take Michigan minus two? They could lose this game very easily to Northwestern with their defense. You're not going to score a lot on either team. It's a very hard choice. Um, you know, do I take Northwestern in 14 on the road? They don't score a lot. Great defense. Michigan with their great defense. You just know it's not going to be a lot of scoring in a game. I would probably have taken Northwestern getting the 14, but the under is much better. Now, had the over-under been normal, 43-44, I could go under 50. That would have been a lock. If I could get that where I had kind of another touchdown for reinsurance, I would have done that. But at this point, it's a real strong play, but it's an under for Michigan Northwestern. Uh, Duke Army, I like this game also under. Um, Duke's laying 12, over-under 49. Uh, so it's actually under 55. Um, Duke's played Georgia Tech, so they've seen this option. So because they've seen this option attack, they already know how to defend it. I love their All-American safety cash. He'll be in the backfield of Army all game. And that's the type of guy that's going to destroy this Army offense. So Army's not going to do anything. Duke's got a very strong defense anyway. And again, they have no quarterback. They don't have much of an offense. They've been scoring. I think this is Georgia Tech. It was 32-20, so it was a 52. And that's against Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech, I think, got a late touchdown. And in the game, Northwestern or uh, Duke had two. They only had a kickoff return. I think they had a pick six. So you take those two out of the equation, and they only they didn't score a whole lot. Um, so Duke's not going to score a lot. Army won't score at all or very often. I could lay Duke minus six at that Army, but I love the under 55 much stronger with the this Duke team that's just uh, very very strong defensively, and really they got a running quarterback, so they're not they're not going to score a whole lot here. Army shouldn't score much again because Duke's played Georgia Tech. It's sort of like that's going to help Notre Dame against Navy in that game. Well, let's talk about that one. Uh, Notre Dame laying what? 14, I believe. Let me find them here. Uh, I believe it's 14. Um, 
anytime you play this option attack already, it really helps you when you play him again because uh, where are they? Okay, Notre Dame 14 and a half over Navy, over under 54 and a half. Notre Dame's a very hard team to really put over or under on. Um, they seem to score, but then they don't. They play Georgia Tech. That was kind of an over. Navy, I don't know. Um, I honestly like Navy because the point spread's so high at 14 and a half. I kind of like Navy at 20 and a half. But my point was because Notre Dame's played Georgia Tech, they'll know how to defense Navy. Um, but I still like. I think Navy's a very good team with a very good defense and a good quarterback. And I just think that the way Navy handles it and as well coached as they are, here I think Notre Dame, I don't think they're that explosive of a team. And I think Navy's so strong that I think Navy in 20 and a half is a good player. But the comment was Notre Dame will defend Navy fairly well because they've seen uh, Georgia Tech. Um, but I like Navy in the in the points in this one at 20. Um, sorry, back to the over-unders. Um, I'll give you two more. Western Kentucky plays Middle Tennessee State. Uh, the over-under on this is 67. I like Western Kentucky. Lane. I like the over in this game down to 61. Western Kentucky, they'll score 50 points a game. they got a great quarterback in Doherty. Middle Tennessee State is a fairly strong offensive team. They're more of an over team than an under team. They have somewhat of a defense, but it won't bother Western Kentucky. Spreads eight and a half. Uh, you can take Western Kentucky down to two and a half. Uh, Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State will score. So when you look at it, this should be a high scoring game. Could get close. Could be a 10 to 14 point game. But the over under at 67, over 61 is much more appealing. Western Kentucky definitely scores in the 40s in this game, and I think Middle Tennessee's right behind him in the 30s. So that puts it at 75-80. Uh, you know, because when I say in the 40s, so I say 45-37. That's an 82, easily going over the 61. Um, so that's what you're looking for, too. You know, a good explosive team in Western Kentucky playing a Middle Tennessee State team who's uh, an offensive team who scores a lot. Uh, those are the type of overs you're looking for. And the numbers, right, at 67, it's hard when these over unders get into the 80s to really get excited about it. You can play them, but it's hard to get excited. But if you can find a 60 spread with a couple of over teams, it makes it very well. And the last one I'll give you is, is another under uh, South Florida and Syracuse. Um, the over-under in this game is 48. South Florida, I watched them against uh, Memphis. Memphis has a fairly weak defense, and South Florida couldn't do anything there. Uh, I just like South... I, 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 I like South Florida as a very good defensive team. Not much offense. Even when they were down, they were just running the ball. Playing Syracuse, who's on their fifth quarterback. They did show some scoring against LSU last week, which I was kind of surprised their fifth quarterback put up 20 points on the board. But I just don't see South Florida scoring anything, but their defense will keep Syracuse in check on the road. Under 54, they'll never get there. Uh, take this game under. Uh, one more under I'll talk about is Florida State-Miami. The over-under on this game looks like 54. 51. Uh, yeah, it was 49, went up to 51. Florida State's a very low scoring team. Um, they're a good defensive team. Uh, the transfer from Notre Dame's terrible. I mean, he, he, has, he throws a lot of interceptions. I like uh, Miami's quarterback, Kafka. Uh, I think he scores, but against Florida State's defense, I don't think he scores that much. This will be a 20 point game for, you know, 21-20, 24-17. This should be a game in the 20s. Uh, we're going to go under 57. Um, I just don't see them getting there. It's a rivalry game. Uh, Miami's not quite there, but I think Florida State being such an under team, 
great defense and goals to their quarterbacks, very weak. Good running, but Miami can be there. Um, I, I just see this as a low score, not a low scoring game, but a, a game in the 40s and we can go under 57. Uh, I think that's a good underplay. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Uh, I have many more over-unders, many more plays. Uh, please let me know um, your thoughts and your comments. Again, we're trying to look at are these teams under or over teams? And you just if they have a real good quarterback, they're over. If you get teams like Tulsa and SMU who are really good offenses and no defense, you kind of want to bet those over and these Michigan Northwesterns. Hell, half the Big Ten, half the MAC are under teams. Wisconsin, Iowa, Northwestern, Minnesota. And when they play each other, it's just such a strong lock um, that you can get. So, anyway, that's week six in college. Um, I'll be doing a 15 team teaser video shortly. My best 15. And we'll go from there. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Good luck to you. And as always, uh, I'm here to make you money. www.teachking.com. Uh, please come to the site, take a look around. You see my history, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Good luck.